welcome to this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Today's podcast episode is looking at fixed versus removable function appliances and which one is best. This was an excellent presentation given by Professor Amit Johal at last year's British Orthodontic Conference. It was based on the work of his PhD student and a friend of mine, Moeyed Pasha, who published his randomized controlled trial last year and received the prestigious dual award at the AAO just a few months ago. So what was his research looking at? Well, they took two classic functional appliances, the removable twin block appliance and the Herbst appliance in the form of the Hangst Herbst. Just to recap, the podcast is the opinion piece of myself and the orthodontics and summary team. It may not be 100% representative of the original lecture, we'll try our best to ensure that it is. So getting on with what the findings were from this particular study. Well, the reason why I really liked the study and also the presentation is that they looked at just beyond the clinical outcomes of the patients. They also looked at what patient outcomes were important and present those as well to give an overall view of where these two appliances lie. So getting on with it, which one of these works better? Which one corrects the old jet better than the other? Well, it's found that the actual Hangst Herbst, the fixed function appliance, is better at correcting the overjet at 7mm correction versus 5.8mm with the twin block. There's only 1.2mm difference and it's relatively small. What they did find though was that the molar and skeletal changes that take place are exactly the same between those two groups. Now, when it came to looking at how far the low incisors proclined or advanced, the key aspect of how a functional appliance works, it was more profound in the herps group compared to the twin block group. A 3mm advancement with the Herbst group, only a 1mm lower in size advancement with the twin block group. And that's a really important variable to appreciate. Some patients we can procline the lower incisors, others we really need to limit it, helping us choose which one fits in better for our patients. One of the key discussions around fixed versus removable functional appliances is the failure to complete treatment. And it was really interesting to see the outcomes of this, a real significant difference with being three times more likely to end treatment early with the twin block group compared to that of the Herbst group. The failure rates were nearly 37% with the twin block group and the failures were far less at 17% in the Herbst group itself. Now when it comes to looking at the duration of total treatment required of the removable twin block group versus the fixed Herbst group, the twin block group was far slower at 1.5 months compared to the Herbst fixed group. Now, it's not all rosy when it comes to looking at the fixed functional appliances. There's also an increase in chair side time. Now, when AMA's group looked at this, they found that the twin block group took 2.7 hours less time than the Herbst group itself. So it's nearly three hours of increased clinical time to use a fixed functional appliance. There's also the emergency side of appointments. Now, if you have an average Herbst appliance from this research, it was found that there's almost three additional appointments for emergencies versus the twin block remo removable functional appliance group where there's only 0.3 emergencies. Translating that, it's almost unlikely to have an emergency with a twin block when compared to a fixed function appliance. When it came to looking at the complications, what I really liked about AMA and Moyad's research is they looked at the severity of complications. So what this defines, we could have a, a minor complication, so an irritation. But actually what we really want to know as a clinical practitioner is what's the severe complication? What are the chances of removing the appliance from the patient to go and have to fix and repair it? Now, when it came to looking at severe complications, they were the same across both groups, both functional and also looking at the removable twin block group, the equal amount between them. So what are the advantages ultimately of the Herbst appliance? Well, you've got greater completion of treatment. You're three times less likely to stop treatment than you are with a removable twin block group. It's quicker to get to the end of treatment. There's a shorter total duration at the same time. Now the disadvantages are it takes a lot longer to clinically flip the appliance and also maintain it during treatment, almost three hours longer. There's more emergencies. We have to factor that in for our patients. Now, other aspects of this research that has well merited its receiving its prestigious dual award is that they looked at the quality of side. They asked patients, what do you think of the use of these appliances? Both groups had similarities and differences. The similarity is both of them negatively affected the quality of life of our patients in a day-to-day -day sense. The aesthetics and self-imaging was far worse with the twin block group compared to the Herbst group. 
patients really did prefer the herpes group and they liked it because it was non-compliant, you could get to the end of treatment more likely. The positive things about TwinBlock was that actually it's flexible and they could remove it for eating and drinking and not have any inhibitions when it comes to having that side of function and use. The conclusions I really liked from Professor Emma Johal, how patients prefer the herpes based on aesthetic, self-images and non-compliance. However, clinicians tend to prefer the twin block because it's quicker, easier and less emergencies for us to have. So my thoughts on this piece of research is that it is time to consider between the func fixed functional appliance, the herbs, and also the removable twin block. We shouldn't have to choose groups at this stage. What we should do is have both in our arsenal, as well as discussing it with the patients as to what their preferences lie and drawing for that particular patient which appliance would be the most appropriate to get them to the end outcome which both are satisfied with. It was great to see my colleague's research being published. He was starting his PhD as I was concluding my training. It's wonderful to see his research being presented at the grand stage and also by the eminent Professor Amit Johal. As always, please do subscribe and look forward to the next episode.